G'day everyone, this is Kyle from APT Training. I wanted to discuss the changes to MDG 41 with regards to training and competence of people working on a mine site with fluid power systems. So 2018, September has seen us with a new version of MDG 41, just been released this week and we're trying to get some information out about what the changes are and how it might affect sites. My first advice is don't panic. The changes are not big and the changes to competence in particular are not huge. There's now two units of competency that have been specified, uh, MEM 18052, which is mobile, maintain mobile systems for fluid power plant, and there's also an AUR unit, which is maintain hydraulic systems. The intent on having two units is to allow trades from either fitters, boilermakers in that area to use the MEM unit, or for automotive such as uh, light or heavy vehicle mechanics to use the AUR, AUR unit. It does give us a nationally recognised standard to work against and moving forward it means that it's fairly easy to distinguish what should happen. The really important thing to note is that MEM 18052 and the AUR equivalent are very entry level units. They're at the bottom of the They apply to the higher level stuff. So if we're going to, if our students want to go on and do Cert 4 in fluid power, these units are generally not selected because there are other units which cover over and above the requirements of these. Most apprentices that are being employed in the industry these days as a fitter actually cover two units which are higher level than the MEM 18052. So as a, as a first line of defence, your current apprentices are already receiving training at or above the requirements of these units. If you've had staff that have done hydraulics one and two, or even hydraulics equivalent in the new, new form, which is MEM 18020, maintain hydraulic system components, this again is a higher level of qualification. In the packaging rule for these units, it says that MEM 18052 cannot be selected with these higher level units. Okay, so they are higher level, they are more than equivalent to the ones specified in MDG 41. The final point that I would make is that your current site training process may actually comply and it may just be a mapping, do mapping exercise to ensure that you are covering all the elements of that particular unit of competency. So while it says that you should or these units actually are recommended they cover it, must you don't have to have these units of competency and it may be better to implement a site specific and machine specific training program. So if you already have a training program on site or you're already engaged with a training program for your fluid power, I would firstly go through a mapping exercise before mandating that everyone needs to have these particular units. The courses that APT offers, if you've done courses with us in the past, we already cover the requirements of those units and we've been working on that ever since we've developed those courses. So they do go above and beyond what the requirements are of those particular units. So just to sum up, don't panic, there's no need to change things straight away and firstly ask some questions and double check that you are already doing the right thing and just cover any gaps that you might need. Site specific or machine specific training might be the better way to cover off on those gaps. If you've got any questions, feel free to reach out to me or any of the APT team and we'll help you with any of this stuff while we can.